In this video, we'll take up the solving trig equations homework sheet. This is the first of two. Um, most of these are pretty straightforward. Uh, they don't use many identities. Um, so yeah, let's just jump right into it. And a lot of them require you to approximate using a calculator. Okay, so I would argue for question one, you're really doing the same thing. You're just isolating cos x or whatever the trig function is. And if it's a reciprocal trig function, like in part C, it was cosecant x. I just took the reciprocal of the of the ratio and changed it to sine x, one of the primary trig functions. So I prefer to work with sine, cos, and tan. Uh, and especially this one, like cosecant x equals negative 3, you have to switch it to uh, primary trig function because this is not going to give you an exact answer negative 3 so and there's no inverse cosecant button on your calculator so you have to change it to sine x um, yeah not much to say so for question one just isolate the trig function and um, use a calculator uh, for cos x equals negative 0.6 I would just do inverse cos of 0.6 and then find the quadrant 2 and 3 answer by doing pi minus reference angle and pi plus Okay, uh, number two is basically the same as number one, uh, except for the angles are special angles, or so you can you can get exact answers. So, um, I I really prefer these questions because uh, I want to I want you to practice your special angles. Okay, number three, basically. It's the same as 1 and 2, except for be, you have to be careful. When you square root both sides, it's plus minus. So instead of uh, just two solutions, you're going to get four solutions because you're going to get an answer in quadrant 1, 2, 3, as well as 4. So I'll take a look at that. Okay. Uh, question 4, nothing special. Just uh, you basically have a trinomial, factor it. Um, and you get your uh, exact answers. Same with number five, you have the factor, it's a simple trinomial essentially. Um, uh, but this will be a calculator because negative seven is not a nice ratio as well as four. Okay, what about six? Six factor, not much to say. Uh, simple trinomial, go from secant x to cos x. Now seven, it's sine 2x minus 0.5. So once I saw the 2x, I'm thinking coterminal angles. Okay, so 2x could be pi over 6 or any angle coterminal to it, and uh, 5 pi over 6 or any angle coterminal to that. Now divide both sides by 2 to solve for x. Now I'm thinking you should have got four answers, or you may be thinking you should have gotten four answers, but there are only two answers because x was restricted from 0 to pi. So we can only take pi over 12 and 5 pi over 12. But if this restriction was 0 to 2 pi, which it usually is, then you would get four answers. Okay, for number 8, uh, just common factor cos x. So here, please don't divide both sides by cos x, um, because then you will lose solutions to your equation. So factor cos x, but it's a common factor, and then solve for cos x equals zero. So if you know the cosine function graph, then pi over two and three pi over two uh, should come to you quite quickly. Any odd multiple of pi over two will do. But there, um, there are not infinite solutions because it's restricted from zero to two pi. Okay, for number nine, uh, I divided both sides by cos two x, uh, but I did it very carefully. I divide by cos 2x and uh, I realized that the values that make cos 2x equal 0 are not solutions to the equation. So uh, I am allowed to divide both sides by cos 2x, but you should just really be careful. Uh, so tan 2x equals 1. So I say 2x is equal to pi or 4 or plus k pi. Why is it not 2k pi? because the period for tan is pi. Divide both sides by 2, and I get 4 solutions, because 
um, uh, you can keep adding by pi over 2 and yeah you get four answers you have to stop adding by pi over 2 after 13 pi over 8 so at, if you do 13 pi over 8 plus pi over 2 you'll get an answer but you can't accept it because it's going to be beyond 2 pi yeah but once you see this 2x you got to be very careful think coterminal angles but in this case um, because it's tan you just add by k pi um, and it's, it makes sense to be pi because tan is quadrant 1 and 3 or 2 and 4 so adding by pi is sufficient but if you don't like this shortcut uh, you could study quadrant 1 as well as quadrant 3 and study the coterminal angles but it's just you're writing more than you really need to you, you can simplify the relationship because you're studying tan and by knowing what makes tan special you yeah you can write just adding k pi instead of 2k pi uh, all right number 10 uh, uh, factoring nothing special negative 3 over 2 will get you no roots here so just study the two roots from sine x equals 2 thirds uh, factor not much to say for 11 number 12 uh, quadratic formula is not factorable um, but once you get the two um, ratios just do inverse tan okay so 13 you're throwing a ball and they say what do you have to restrict the angle to be now they restricted the angle to be 0 to pi over 2 including 0 and pi over 2 um, I guess you can make the argument you can accept 0 an angle of 0 radians would be okay because you'll be throwing the ball straight ahead of you um, you're basically rolling the ball on the ground I guess you can say uh, but definitely pi over 2 doesn't make any sense you can't let uh, the angle be pi over 2 because then you're just throwing the ball straight up you're not going to reach the I believe as the home plate which is 18 meters away um, so yeah I, I didn't um, I didn't let x equals 0 or pi over 2 whereas in the answer key it says 0 including 0 and pi over 2 anyways the home plate is 18 meters away so let r equals 18 uh, I see sine 2x equals 2 fifths so I'm going to I'm going to take the quadrant 1 answer and the quadrant 2 answer and any angle coterminal to that divide both sides by 2 and since x is between 0 and pi over 2 I have two solutions 0.21 uh, approximately 0.21 or approximately 1.37 uh, for 14 uh, set it equal to 0 common factor tan x um, now why did I do the k pi because the restriction on x was from negative pi to 3 pi over 2 it wasn't the usual 0 to 2 pi so that's when I did the I, I had to do I just I had to gather all the infinite solutions and then uh, figure out which of the ones fall within the restricted domain so uh, it's always a good idea to gather all the solutions and then reject the ones that don't fall in the restriction it's much easier as opposed to because a lot of students, what they, do, they they write down the solutions and hope hope for the best. They hope they have all the solutions, uh, and they didn't miss anything. But that that strategy is uh, very worrisome. It's much better to just gather all the solutions and then reject the ones that don't fit in. Um, so yeah, tan x equals zero at k pi. Because a lot of students will just write uh, zero pi and two pi, but it's yeah and but then they'll miss negative pi because the restriction is no longer 0 to 2 pi so whenever you see something funny happening with the restriction or if there's no restriction just gather all the solutions to the equation it's so much easier you'll you'll be much more likely to get the right answer that's my uh, advice for that anyways this is the first uh, sheet on solving trig equations the next one I have to say is a significantly more challenging because of the more variety this this sheet was just a lot of factoring uh, trinomials and you didn't apply many different identities but the next sheet will give you lots of practice on that 
And this sheet is also good just to just to uh, warm up and uh, practice the algebra.